Hi everybody, my name is Rafai and I want to do a quick short video and I hope you know you get this and you get to like it and share it around. So I want to talk a little bit about the kind of press that Nigeria needs and this is leading up to the next elections in 2023. When you look at the historical antecedents in Nigeria, we're fond of making one mistake over and over again and we don't get it right. Why? Because we major in the minor. And when we major in the minor, we don't do what is right by asking the right questions. And I keep asking, what kind of precedents do Nigeria need at a point in time like this? And why have we not gotten it right all this while? We have not gotten it right because there's a corruption of culture. And because there's a corruption of culture, society always tilts towards those that corrupt society because society now sees them as their only mainstay. So nothing happens because there's a corruption of culture. Society tilts towards those that corrupt society and society thinks that there is nothing better than corruption. And that's why year in, year out, we always go back to the same warped mentality, the same warped politicians that do not do anything well for us. Why? Because we don't ask the questions. And let me tell you, society is complacent in the problems of Nigeria. It's not only about politicians. Society is also complicit. So what are the key questions we should ask? Ask anybody that vies for precedent that what will it do to bring people out of poverty? He needs to give you a roadmap, not just one grand plan that I'll bring a thousand people out of poverty, 50 people out of poverty. He needs to give you a month by month or a quarter by quarter breakdown of his targeted policies and how he's going to bring people out of poverty. Why is it important to ask that question? The reason why you should ask that question is this. If you put in somebody that can bring people out of poverty, then there'll be more crime because the higher level of poverty is linked to the crime we have in society. And when there's crime, there's social instability in general. So ask anybody that is vying for presidency that what will he do to bring people out of poverty? And he has to give you a systematic, empirical approach to bringing people out of poverty. Secondly, ask him what will he do to ensure double digit growth in Nigerian economy? You see, if Nigeria can go double digit, it will help a lot. Our population growth rate is about 3%. If you grow double digit, year on year growth is double digit, then Nigeria can be a bigger, greater economy because once economic expansion happens, everybody starts to benefit from the economy and things get better. Economic expansion means there is more FDI, foreign direct investment. People can get jobs. People can get everything that they need to make the economy work. You see, the strength of every big economy is the ability to get jobs. Why do people go to the UK? People don't go to the UK because you pick money on the floor in the UK. You still work for it. But people go to the UK because they know that the economy is so buoyant that they can't stay out of job for about five to six months. In no time, they'll get job because the economy keeps expanding and there are more areas to the economy. So how and how will it ensure that we have economic growth? Because if Nigeria grows double digits, about 10% growth, for instance, then we'll have more jobs and people will be sustained and the economy will do better. Also ask, what will you do for healthcare? Healthcare is a big deal in Nigeria and there are two approach. You can make it private sector driven. Yes, you can bring in health insurance, regulate them, pump investment, and you can still retain the government hospitals. Healthcare is a big deal. Healthcare is about 3.5 trillion industry in America and other parts of the world. In fact, the healthcare system in America you know, it's as, almost as big as the economy. But the method they use, they really focus on health insurance and the likes. Although there's still a lot of corruption in it, but it works. Then there's the British NHS system where the government pays for it from the taxes people get. So has the French model, so has the other model. So ask him what is the mix he will use for health care. You know, to be able to get health care affordable. But one thing is important, there must be a level of health insurance, maybe on the national scale. It must be run effectively and it must be devoid of corruption. So probably even if the money is accumulated, it should be put in private hands, or independent hands, I should say, to be able to run the healthcare system. And what model will this person use? Will he go back to the model of having, you know, the tertiary healthcare sector 
with the federal medical centers and bolstering the primary health care centers and make them refer you to the tertiary health care centers. He must be able to get his health care mix right and ask him very pertinent questions. What is he going to do as regards that? Fourthly, watch my next video next week. You get to hear more ideas on the questions you should be asking. My name is Rufai Sini. Share this video.